Jason, how you doing? Good, how are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, give me a, an indication of uh, how, with the kind of pressure that might be on your shoulders now with uh, with Demari out for the season at the other other cornerback this year. Well, really, I don't I don't like to think of it as any more you know additional pressure. I think it's the pressure I put on myself initially. You know, even if I had Demari on the side, I. I definitely do feel like, you know, it was a trust thing as far as, you know, as much experience as he had. But um, I'm a very vocal guy in our room, regardless of who's there and who's not. And uh, I just kind of try and just keep coaching the younger guys. I mean, it's obviously, you know, I'm going to have to do it a, a bit more, but it's something I've always been willing to accept. That's a very, it's a very uh, experienced secondary you got, you got this season. Is that... You know, athletically, obviously, you guys are very good, too. But is that the big thing that might set you apart this year is you guys are, are seasoned? You've been through the wars? Oh, I de that's definitely going to separate us. I mean, we got guys that got three, four, and they're going on four years of experience now in college football. So uh, that's that's definitely going to make the game slow down for us, which we can play faster and make more plays and get turn those PBUs into interceptions. Jason, how are you feeling physically? You feel 100% going into this season? Yeah, I feel great. I was just talking to my dad about it. It's like, you know, I was down in Coco during quarantine, you know, just isolated and training. This is the most time as a college athlete you get, you know, you know, the professional's time to, you know, care for your body, recover. And that's with, you know, just staying in the training room and, you know, doing prehab instead of rehab, you know. Jason, I think you saw it's good to be a corner in the NFL. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I was just curious, Austin P has some, they have some guys that have put up some numbers on the outside. Just what are some impressions of what you've seen filmed from them? I mean, yeah, we're not even on the outside. We got guys on the inside. I think he led the F FCS in uh, receiving yards number 11. But, uh, you know, we don't take anybody lightly. We uh, definitely get a chance to, one, just play the game again. And, uh like you said, they got some good guys on the outside that I love to match up with and show them what I could do. Have you thought about what it's going to be like to walk out there and no one's going to be in there but you guys? Uh, we did. We did. And, you know, we practice like it. We practice like it because nobody's going to be there. It's just us. We're the energy. We're the and energy is contagious. So we know as long as we keep that energy, at least the team will, you know, keep it throughout the game. Jason, how how are you? What are you seeing out of uh, Marquez and AJ? You know, kind of on the opposite side of you. Uh, trust, trust. They're they're gaining trust. They're earning trust every day. They're earning trust every day, and that's uh, mentally. That's uh, grasping the playbook. That's uh, making their plays when the time comes. And really, you know, within our defense, it's just that edge. You got to have that edge, especially at corner. You know, you're left on the island a lot. You got to. You got to know and believe that you're the best. And yeah, so that's what we're seeing from them. We're getting great production out of both of them. Jason, how did you find out that Damari was kind of out for the year? And what were those kind of initial thoughts that were going through your head at that time? He called me personally. He called me personally and just was, you know, down on it. And he, he's no, I've had a surgery before, you know, just how to battle that mentally. And uh, just kind of been there for him there and just not to beat himself up and just, you know, God has a plan, and I just try and explain that to him, and not only him, everybody is that, you know, we just we just living in it, and you know, you gotta accept it, you gotta let the adversity teach you. Do you feel like do you feel like the expectations for this defense changes at all without Damari, and obviously with uh, you know Jalen opting out? Uh, it's, def it's definitely going to change. It's definitely going to change. You got a fir uh, projected first rounder, you know, leave from the team. And then you have, you know, again, he'll, he would have been on his fourth year of experience at corner. And, you know, I mean, but the thing is, it's, it's football. So it's, it's next man up mentality. And that's something we've been dealing with, dealing with this COVID and stuff like that. So it's next man up mentality. And we have trust in all of our guys, one, two, three deep. Coaches praised uh, a couple of the younger guys, Rashad Battle and Javante Royal, namely. Uh, what have you seen from the young guys coming in, the rookies, uh, you know, just compared to your couple of years on the team now? Uh, I would say the receptiveness. Like, they're, they, uh, 
anytime you talk to them, you know, it's like, it's no talking. It's just, you know, they're trying to understand. They genuinely want to understand conceptually about the defense and offenses, you know, so I think that's the thing that's going to separate them. And I keep trying to stress that to them is being receptive to not only coaches, but your players, your vets that's in the room with you. And, you know, they've been extremely receptive. And that's not to even touch base on their physique, like their physique. You know, those are big corners, you know, just like me. And um, just trying to talk to them within their game of being a big corner. Cause you gotta, our game's a little different than a five, eight, five, nine, five, ten corner, you know. We got to use our size, and that's what we got to do. Jason, obviously the defense will change because you're losing two great athletes, but what would change scheme-wise, what you might be able to do X and O's on the field? Uh, I haven't seen much throughout this process change schematically. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I don't really have anything on that one. Jason, you talked about the, you know, how it's different for big corners. You obviously got your opportunity, your first opportunity really as you know, a guy that kind of specialized in shutting down some bigger guys. You guys have traditionally played field and boundary, um, but do you think you might get an opportunity to maybe follow some guys around this year, especially if there's a team that has a, a big physical receiver? Hey, look, I hope. I tell Doozy every time, just put me on the biggest of the best, and that's – uh. Look, I, I, I'll fight for that one, but uh, boundary requires a bit more knowledge. So uh, I, I think I'll find myself in the boundary more this year, especially with the circumstances we're in. Jason, I apologize if this was already asked. I got here a little late, but I wanted to ask you about the level of communication that you guys have and the chemistry that's going on between the guys in the back in that secondary, because a lot of you guys have played together, you know, you, Paris, Tamar, and there may be new guys, but – What's your feeling on the growth and you've seen in your understanding of the game and then you your trust in your in your teammates like, hey, this guy's covering for me because you know these different switches really well? Well, you hit the you hit right on the head. What I was gonna start with is the trust. Uh we have a lot of trust in each other. We've made we've made our mistakes together and we've had success together. And uh I think that's the biggest thing is uh and that goes to touch on the communication. I mean, we talk so much and I've I've noticed how much we talk pre-snap now. You know, before it was just, you know, do your job. And now we're seeing things that we we weren't seeing together before, whether that be 2018, 2019. Do we have any other questions for Jason? Jason, just one other one for me. I, I'm just curious, I, how proud are you uh, as a team for how you guys have handled all the restrictions during this pandemic? Um. But I'm I'm still shocked almost you know it's it, it's crazy it was, it was such a just you know you floating in a in a gray area you know you never knew you got guys these are you know and I think I think people tend to forget that these are 17 18 19 20 year old guys that are dealing with something one of a kind and you know with COVID going on and these protocols and trying to stay safe and you know fighting the temptation of being a typical college student and that's partying or, you know, whatever. And I, I, I'm just, I'm extremely proud. I'm extremely proud of the team, my room, and just everybody, staff members, everybody, because it takes everybody. Jason, do you normally have family uh, come down to, to games or go to games? And how disappointing kind of w will that be that uh, for home games, at least, family and friends won't be able to be there in, in September? Uh, at the very least. Uh, extremely, extremely. I just, I called my mom last night and I was, I was like, like, you haven't missed a game since I was seven. Like, it's crazy. My dad coached me since I was seven, all the way up until high school. Uh, 17, hasn't missed a game. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But I know that, I know that they're there. They're just not physically there. So um, just not having that presence, that sideline presence is going to be different for me. It's going to be different for me, but it's, uh, Something I'm going to have to adapt to. Jason, uh, you know, I've asked this to other players from other position groups uh, when it comes to how you guys handle the offseason. You had to, like, work in Zoom meetings for a while. What were some of the biggest things you saw growing through that period and just learning kind of away from the field and concepts that challenged you that you were able to grow from when you guys were able to eventually take the field in training camp? 
Right. Yeah. And I, I, I was talking to my DB coach probably like a few weeks ago and we were saying how much faster we're playing because they actually understand the concepts of the defense. You know, you know what other pieces are doing. So, you know, where voided zones are or, you know, things like that. And even the younger guys kind of surprise me sometimes in the meeting when they answer questions, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, you know, they're really, they're really grasping the knowledge and that's something other classes they weren't, you know, allowed that opportunity because you come in and the stuff is flying in the summer. You're coming in as workouts, meetings, all type of stuff. So to get that downtime, I guess you want to call it, and within the Zoom meetings, and I know beyond our Zoom meetings, I would FaceTime some of them and we'll talk even more football. So they have plenty of time to really grasp, like, what's going on within our defense conceptually. Jason, I'm not sure when we're going to get to talk to you again. So if you'll indulge me a, a look ahead, uh, talking about fans in the stands, um, how much would uh, you have been appreciative of, of being able to have some fans uh, up at Boston College, uh, up near your hometown there, uh, you know, a little quick drive from your hometown? How, how much would that have been a nice thing for you? And uh, I guess are you still hopeful that, that might happen? I'm extremely hopeful for that. I'm extremely hopeful for that. I need, I need something this year. You know, like I said, my parents have been – extremely present, uh, specifically in my athletic career. And uh, I've been very, very hands-on. They road runners, I call my two, uh, my two ladies, my grandma, my mom, they road runners. They'll drive, fly anywhere. And uh, yeah, now nah, that one game would mean a lot, it mean a lot. Was, was Boston College a place you considered going? It was, I was committed. I was committed there for about seven or six months. And I ended up decommitting, I think about two months before signing day in 2017. So will your family get together and what will the atmosphere be like if they do in that house watching you? Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be weird. Cause I mean, I not definitely the last time we were there at Chestnut Hill it was as a commit, you know? So we were soaking it in as being an Eagle. So to be playing against the Eagles, that'd be, be interesting. What are their plans for this weekend? Are they coming into town to try and meet up with you after the game or something? Or are they staying up in Connecticut? Nah, they staying home, staying safe. I don't let my grandma out the house. No. No, sir. Wait, I'm curious, uh, Jason, what did the, the Narduzzi say to you to get you to decommit from BC? Uh, he just showed me the campus. That's all. He showed me how they work here. And uh, the biggest thing was definitely the Steelers. I'm a guy who just loved to pick brains. So to have that availability was something I, I loved. 